football. Who was the first upset? Clemson lost to Syracuse 27-24. and 24. Mm, mm, mm. They was ranked number two when they played. They played Friday and lost to Syracuse. Now they ranked seven. Clemson, step your game up. I've had a couple more upsets. We had also um, Washington State. They lost to Cal. Crazy front flip touchdown, I would like to say. Crazy front flip I still touchdown. missed that one. He hit me. Did you see that front flip? I was like, nah, I didn't see it yet. I ain't even going to lie to you guys. I still haven't seen it, but he was telling me it was crazy. Um, also, Washington, they ranked number five. Not Washington State. They ranked number eight. They lost. But Washington, it was a bad, bad week for Washington State, period. They lost, too, um, to Arizona, 13-7. And Auburn, they also lost. They was ranked 10. They also lost over this weekend. So a lot of upsets this past weekend in and, college football. And it's crazy not to see Louisville on this list. Louisville. Lamar Jackson, man. That was a hell of a game Saturday. Who did they play again? Uh, Boston College. Boston they lost, College. They lost 45 to 42. How many yards Lamar had? 180 rushing and 332 passing. Woo! That's almost 500 yards in a that game. Is, that is 500 yards, actually. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> that is 500 yards. I got corrected, but I'm absolutely here. That is 500 yards. Wow. One player, 500 yards. And they talk about, I don't think he could be a quarterback in the NFL. Come on, boy. I take him on my team any day. But it is sad that they're not ranked, but their defense is terrible. Every time he score, they let Boston um, score. So he's in a bad situation, but I still got him as one of the front runners for the Heisman Trophy, and we'll talk more about that next week. Now, we talked about national ranked schools and all these other schools. Let's talk about the local college schools, all right? This weekend was Morgan State's homecoming game. And they blew out Savannah State. Uh, 40, 48 to 28. 48 to 28. Pretty good game. All right, Morgan State doing your thing. Morgan State Bears. Um, other two local schools that I want to talk about is Coppin State. They one and one right now. Their homecoming game is this coming Saturday. So, you know, wish you guys luck. See what you could do. The other team is... Towson. Towson. Not doing too good, Towson. They are two and four, and they just lost to the Richmond Spiders. Yeah, they just lost. And also, they took an L to Morgan State as well, 10 zip. So, Towson, step your game up. But that's your local college. Let's talk about a little bit about local high school football teams. I know last week we talked about the national ranks, but um, this week we want to talk about the divisions. Got a couple schools we want to talk about. Um, and for those who don't know, um, high school football is divided in different classes. So you got your A1 class, your 2A class, your 3A class. Those are like different divisions. All right, so your class A1 class, um, Lewis High School, they the top 6-0. and Harvard e. Grace, they second. So I guess they're doing pretty good. The division I want to focus on, like I always talked about last week, is class 3A, Franklin High School. <clears throat> Somebody sitting next to me is going to be playing there pretty soon for the JV team. I'm not saying no names. Um, but Franklin High School right now is 4-1. So they're doing pretty high right in the football team. So let's see let's see what they're going to do. Got to keep stepping their game up. So that's your local news for um, local high school games. We'll keep you guys um, in tune what's going on, anybody having big games. And, again, man, anybody out there, if you know anybody that play Morgan State, Coppin State, or even Towson, or some of these local high schools, and, you know, they want to come in here and do a little interview, reach out to us, man. We bring them on so they can start practicing now how to, how to, conduct, how to conduct a professional interview so that way when you make it to the next level, you're able to speak right and answer the right questions. So this will be a good opportunity for you guys to get that practice in. So reach out to us. We'd love to have you guys here and talk about, you know, your experience and maybe you could give some advice to some people who are out there watching what they should do and what should they take serious once they start playing, you know, football at the next level. Um, let's talk about one of my son's favorite subjects. Basketball. <laughs> NBA season starts tomorrow. 
two important games, Boston versus Cleveland and Houston versus Golden State. So let's talk about that first game, Boston versus Cleveland. Where they at, Cleveland? Yes, they at Cleveland. Who you got in that game? Cleveland. You got Cleveland winning? Yeah. I got Boston winning. Um, this is probably going to be the most hate Kyrie will ever get in his career. Most boos he ever will have. He's going to get booed? Yeah, he's going to get booed. <laughs> he's going to get booed. He don't deserve to get booed, but I can see why he's going to get booed, especially after you make a comment about he deserves it. To, to get booed? Yeah, I mean, after he made the comments, but, I mean, if you help a team win a championship, you shouldn't be booing him. You may not like how he asked to be traded, but he did help you guys win the championship yeah. there. Yeah. But look at LeBron. LeBron disrespected him and left, came back, and they love him. They did. They, 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 burned, they burned his jerseys and all that. I ain't even going to lie. So, yeah, he, yeah he's going to get booed. But I think LeBron is questionable if he's going to play, right? Yeah. Um, and they don't even, they're not even at full capacity. They don't got Isaiah Thomas playing. Boston's going to come in there, and I think they're going to set a statement early. Kyrie is going to let them know early, hey, look what I could do. You guys didn't let me fly like an eagle like I wanted to, and that's why he left. I think, I think D. Rose is on a mission this year. Yo, it was funny because I was like, yo, who that guy with that big fro? I didn't even know that was um, D. Rose. He letting his hair grow out and all that. D. Rose is going to be okay, man. Uh, you know, I like D. Rose. I ain't even going to front, you know, but I, I, I don't think he's going to be the game changer. You know, not D. Rose, not against Boston. Boston got too many weapons, but, you know, let's see. It's definitely going to be a good game. I'm excited. I can't wait. And then who, who got the second game? Golden State versus Houston. We already know who won't win that game. Probably um, the two best shooting teams in the NBA. It's going to be a shootout. Um, I say it now, and I'm always saying I hate Golden State, so I'm going with Houston. But I think Golden State will pull it out, but I'm going with Houston. I think Houston needed to add one more weapon, but they still got a lot of good shooters. And if they shoot it like they were shooting in the beginning of last year, they might be able to pull it off. But I don't think they're going to win at Golden State the first game. No. Let's see. That's who they, That's what the teams that play tomorrow? Just two games? Um, it's two games tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. And then Thursday is like, kind of like the official, official, official. No, Wednesday. Or Thursday. I know my New York Knicks, you know. Playing the, the Oklahoma City Thunder. We got a big game. <laughs> we probably lose by like 70. They, um. They are starting Melo at the four, so Porzingis plays. They might match up against each other. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Wow. So Porzingis is going to have to guard his mentor. Yeah. Wow. And he's going to have to guard him. It's funny how these, these players that got traded, their first game of the season is against the team that they got traded or left. That's yeah. weird. Kyrie going to Cleveland. I mean, Melo not going to New York. We're going. The game is in OKC, but still, the first game against New York that's going to be crazy. Um, I think Stephen Curry is on a mission this year, and I believe he's the best point guard in the NBA. Even though Westbrook is my favorite player, I still think he's the best, and I think he's going to kill it this season because a lot of people downplay him last season because of KD, but he's also a seven, he led his team to 73 and nine win season, so I think he'll turn into that player again. <sighs> Whatever, no comment. I'm hating, I don't, I don't want to see them win. Somebody gonna get hurt in Golden State, if they get one hurt. of their big threes gonna get hurt, and somebody gonna kidnap their coach. It's one. And that's it. It's over for Golden State. If one of them gets hurt, then they have other people to step up. Ah. KD got hurt last year, and then it didn't affect them. When KD got hurt last year, though, he wasn't part of their rotation, right? That was his first year on that team. So they was able to afford not playing without him. 
because they wasn't really used to playing with KD. See the difference? Now, if Curry would have got hurt last year, instead of KD and miss all those games, I think it would have been a big difference. But then it's still regular season. <laughs> yeah. All right, so I want to talk about – so, you know, basketball, that's where we leave it at. You know, we got some more stuff coming up. Season just started, so we'll get more into basketball a little later. Um, I do – you know, I'm, I'm trying – we're going to try our best to keep politics out of this show because, you know, sports and politics, in my opinion, shouldn't mix. All right, that's my opinion. But it's hard to ignore a statement that was said by somebody who I kind of, I ain't going to say I looked up to, but I respected this man as a coach. Um, I respected him as an analyst on ESPN, morning show. Until I heard this ridiculous statement coming out of his mouth. All right? What, what that idiot said, Dustin? Mike Dick the Oh, yeah, we're talking about Mike Dick. You idiot. Said there hasn't been any oppression in the last 100 years. Yeah, so he's like, oppression? What oppression? I haven't seen oppression in the last 100 years. And at first, you kind of like, oh, all right. But then you really look at the statement, 100 years. So I wrote down a couple things here that I kind of want to, like, just to mention. Because it happened. Um, the Civil Rights Act, 1964. The Voting Act, 1965. Rosa Park, 1955. Man, that's, that's about 100 years, brother. And we could go on and go on. Martin Luther King assassination, Malcolm X assassination, and go on and go on and go on. So, Mike... Like the dude from the Breakfast Club would say, you get the donkey of the week, my dude, for saying something out, something like that out your mouth, man. Lost all respect for you. Um, and again, this year, man, I, I said it once that dude got in the office, we're really going to see how racism is still alive in this country. A lot of people kind of swept it under the rug once Obama got into office, but now we're starting to witness how alive it is. And again, that's enough about politics. But I just needed to say that because a coach made that statement. Somebody who was respected in the NFL, respected among players. Coached some of the greatest players in the Hall of Fame now. And for you to make that statement, mm-mm-mm. All right, so guys, let's talk about the top football team because I know we're about to close out. So I want to give you guys our top five. Anybody online, they want to share their top five. That's cool. We read them out. So you go first, champ. I have the Kansas City Chiefs at number one, the Philadelphia Eagles at number two, the Carolina Panthers at number three, at four, I have the Patriots, and at five, I have the Falcons. You bugging how, how you got the Falcons after that big loss that they just had against Miami? You still got them as a top five team in the league? Yeah. How? I mean, they lost the game. Everybody loses. They're still good. They're still good, you think? Yeah. All right. My top five, I mean, we, we got the two, the first two identical. I got the Chiefs. I got Philly. I got Steelers in there. Okay, even they, uh, I got them, I got them on my fourth. My three would be the Patriots, Steelers would be fourth, and then my fifth, I got a combo. I got the Seahawks, and then I got a slash Falcons, and we all know why I'm still kind of hesitant on the Falcons, because of, you know, they can't close out those big games. Right now, to me, those are my top five teams in the NFL. How are you going to get on me and the Falcons at number five and you got the Falcons at number five? <laughs> well, technically, I got the Falcons at number six because I got um, you know, I got a slash. I got the Seahawks there, and then a I got the Falcons. Mean, a slash means tie. A slash means tie? Yeah. A uh -huh. slash means tie. So y'all didn't put Green Bay in there because of the injury? 
Yeah, yeah. I, I don't got Green Bay in there because I definitely would have had Green Bay in there, but once um, Aaron Rodgers went down, it's over. And he might be gone for the season. So I could understand that maybe he's gone two weeks, three weeks, maybe. Um, yeah, the whole season, I don't see it. The Panthers, I see you got the Panthers on your list. I got them at three. Uh, yeah. yeah. Any honorable mentions? Any, any honorable I don't got no honorable mentions. What about you? Jacksonville. Jacksonville, they just Jacksonville they don't, got the, don't got a quarterback. Yeah. You can't. To me, if you're gonna win a Super Bowl, you gotta have a quarterback. A quarterback is gonna mm-hmm. you're gonna be like like I look at my top five, all of them got good quarterbacks. Um I look at your top five, they all got quarterbacks. Jacksonville, nah. I don't think so. Now, if Jacksonville was to trade for Eli Manning. That's a different story. Eli, Eli Manning. Now, a story came out, right? He's trying to leave? Well, he's not trying to leave, but you know how people start throwing stuff in the air. You know, Tom Coughlin now runs football operations down in Jacksonville. Yeah. And they need a quarterback. And Eli Manning, if they could get him to kind of see that big picture, if, they, if you put Eli Manning as a quarterback in Jacksonville, they definitely a Super Bowl contender to me. Yeah, I look at Jacksonville, how I looked at the Seahawks a couple of years before they really started peaching, and, and Carolina the same way they were just a couple of years away from really being a problem for people. I, I think that's what that is. Right, Jacksonville. They just don't got no quarterback. But every one of them teams y'all both mentioned, quarterback goes down as a whole other team. Yeah. 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 You know, definitely the Patriots, but I'm looking at the Chiefs. They got that rookie backup quarterback sitting their way. And it depends when Alex Smith go down. If Alex Smith to go down now and he get a couple weeks behind him, because that boy is going to be a beast on that bench. What you about to say? Um... I feel like the Chiefs would still be a playoff team if Alex Smith goes down. So a playoff team? Yeah. I think. I can see that. Good enough. Philly would be in trouble. Um, Steelers would be in trouble. As as we seen, whenever Ben go down, they back us never do good. Patriots, is, think, a little bit because I think they'd be in trouble. you can never count the Patriots out. When, when, um, when Brady was suspended those first four games, they went three and one. And they still got that backup quarterback sitting there waiting. Waiting. Seahawks, we already know. Quarterback, they done. Falcons, they done. Um, <clears throat> I don't know what other team out there that I think would be a Super Bowl contender. Skins? Skins? Uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't think, think they are ready just I yet. Think, I don't think they got that. Philly and Skins, they're going to make it to the playoffs, but they're not going to make it to the championship. Um, it's either, To me right now, represent... Right now... I would probably go Patriots and Seahawks right now. Patriots and Seahawks no. right now. No. Who you go with? Out of this? Right now. Who you Super Bowl right now? Who you think? Mm, I got the Chiefs. Chiefs. And Panthers. You got the Panthers going back? I don't got the Panthers going back. Um, what, 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 what you think? I, I like that. Chiefs and Panthers? Yeah. Oh. Right now. Yeah. 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 I, think can, I, think can, I think Kansas City would take it. Yeah, probably. If it was between the Chiefs and the Panthers, yeah. I'll go with the Chiefs yeah. on that game. Yeah, yeah I'll go with the Chiefs. But Cam Newton is a bad man too, man. You can't sleep on him, so... All right, guys, I definitely, before we get out of here, I know we got a couple minutes. I want to give a big shout-out again to our sponsor, Footage Society. Again, they located in Maryland, in Laurel, Maryland, 509 Main Street, Suite B. Um, you get, you know, all the latest sneakers. Go visit them on their website, footagesociety.com, or you could give them a call at 240-319-4062. Once again, 240 240- Three one nine four zero six two. I want to thank everybody for tuning in. 
Trust me, we want to have more surprises for you guys. And I definitely want to give a shout out to RadioOnFire.com, Diamond K, for their hospitality and showing us nothing but love here. And again, we'll see y'all next week, same day, same time, 6 or 7. Who you think? Trey Verdejo, I represent the old school. And I'm Destin Verdejo, and I represent the new wave. All right. Peace. Peace.